Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So this is the last session of the month. We got close to 45%, but I don't think we will quite make it, which is what I kind of guesstimated would happen. <laughs> yeah, so continuing to work on this window here. And uh, I'm working kind of, because there's a lattice work over top, I'm working kind of a diamond shape at a time. Just because that's sort of the way that makes sense to me right now. And I'm no longer really stitching diagonally, so... That is what I'm doing. The nature sounds may be a little bit louder today. I've got my windows open because it was a nice, cool day. Yeah, the heat kind of broke. We had, it was really hot yesterday, and, uh, but then it cooled down at night. It wasn't humid. It wasn't smoky, so we were able to open the windows, and it's still cool right now, so I'm just leaving them open. I will close them a little bit later when the heat starts to climb a bit. But yeah, we're supposed to have a reprieve for a couple of days before it gets back up to, back up to hot again. But yeah, there's some birds outside that are being fairly loud. <laughs> I closed the window that's directly beside me, so that should help a little bit with the sound. But yeah, I got kind of an open floor plan and my kitchen windows are open behind me, so. But yeah, but take advantage of the nice, clear, cool air. Because yeah, we had a couple nights or a couple days where we wanted to open the windows at night, but it was just smoky. And right now the smoke seems to be a lot better. So, like I said, nothing like last year. Last year was really bad. So, but yeah, that cool beginning of July where it rained quite a bit, I think helped a lot with that. So, okay, let's see. So yeah, like I said, it forms kind of a diamond shape here because that's where more of the lattice comes down. So I'm going to work sort of inside it for now. And if we finish that, then what I often do is I do sort of the next bit of the lattice work around it, the gray and blue, and then start the next diamond. Yeah, as you can see, I've got quite a few threads there. But inside these diamonds is not as many colors, so we'll see how much progress I can make today. Yeah, so to get to 45% would be under 400 stitches, but more than 200. So like I said, I don't think I'll get that done today. We'll see. I really like when it's this kind of weather, I don't have to turn on the heat or the air conditioner. Yeah, I can just manage it by opening the windows when it's cool and closing them when it's hot. Yeah, our energy costs are super high in the winter because, yeah, when it's down to minus 40, the, uh, the furnace has got to run pretty much continuously, so. That's even with our house being way more energy efficient. Yeah, one of my friends said recently she had her house assessed because um, there's like a 
rebate you can get for making your house more energy efficient. And she was shocked to find out that there was very little, um, uh, what you might call it, insulation in the, uh, in the attic. I said, yeah, our house was the same. It was, they said it was R4. There was only a few inches of insulation up there. So a few years ago, we, we rented a machine and did it ourselves. It's much better. Holds the heat better in the winter and keeps the place from turning into an oven in the summer because that's that was the biggest problem was the sun beats down and when there's no insulation yet yeah, just comes right through <laughs> and the whole place would get so hot. When uh, my son was little we had to do a lot of camping out in the basement where it was a lot cooler. Now it's not as bad, and we generally don't have to do that unless it's, you know, 40 or more degrees uh, Celsius, which is like 100 or above. Okay, so. Whew. Yeah, I will probably end up with more than one thread of this color because of the way it's branching off. There's a lot of it here, but it's sort of not in a great big block altogether. So when that happens, I often end up with threads everywhere. Yeah, my friend came by with her dog and we went for a walk and got rained on. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, I said, well, we ain't, we're not made of sugar. We're okay. We won't melt. <laughs> it only lasted for a couple of minutes anyway. I said it was just long enough to make everything humid, right? <laughs> okay, I think I may need a new thread here. Oh, this is my last big long one. Yeah, when I was looking at the mock-up, this area looked more brown. I was surprised to find out how many shades of orange are in it. Yeah, they're often not the colors I expect, but so far, I haven't unearthed designs. As designer, I haven't had a problem yet. I've made, now let me think. This is my third Heaven and Earth Designs, I believe. Yes, because I made Oriental Triptych and a Blue Dragon as well. And then I've done three full coverage pieces by RDC. The, uh, Soulful Mediterranean Tranquility, and then I did Lighthouse at Sunset, and Make-A-Wish painting, which was the one that looks like a, um, like the Northern Lights picture, and yeah, so, and then I did one other, which was the Majora's Mask Clock Town, a small one, but it is still a full coverage piece, so. done six six full coverage pieces so far and this is my seventh yeah once you get sucked down this rabbit hole <laughs> there are just so many beautiful pieces I want to make and not enough time so far the number of patterns I've bought would still be possible to finish them in a lifetime. I haven't quite gotten 
to that point yet but yeah there are some people in groups who are like I have 300 I should probably stop buying them but <laughs> and I often say collecting craft supplies and using them are our separate hobbies <laughs> just like I have with buying books and reading them yeah it's bad too because uh I have still I got a whole bookshelf of print books I haven't read yet and they're like double stacked in most of it and uh, I just don't read print as much anymore yeah I never thought I'd become an ebook reader but I ended up buying myself a kindle oh sheesh almost 10 years ago now and uh yeah, because I discovered all the free books and then I got tired of reading it on my phone screen. So I ended up buying myself a paper white for Christmas that year. And yeah, sort of never gone back. I'm on my second Kindle now, the other one. Finally died, but... I pierced that wrong. But uh, yeah, I got spoiled by being able to... Um, being able to make the font bigger although I do find if it's a non-fiction book I do still prefer the print because I just find like in Kindle you can highlight and make notes and put you know um, bookmarks in it and everything but I don't know I just find with non-fiction it's easier when you can physically flip back and forth they have those features on the Kindle but it's just it's not the same yeah as you know sticking a little you know, post-it note flag and being able to just flip back and forth really easily. Like I said, they do have those features on the Kindle, but yeah. Like if I'm, if it's a fiction book, a novel, then I prefer the ebook. If it's a nonfiction, I often prefer the print. Although I have read nonfiction on my Kindle. In fact, I've been trying to sort of do more of that. So sort of for every couple of, uh, what you might call it, uh, fiction books I read, I try to read a non-fiction. Yeah, not that there's anything wrong with reading fiction, of course, but try to expand my knowledge as well. But yeah, I, I started a print book a fiction book in like <laughs> March and I'm still not even halfway through and yeah I used to devour a book every two to three days but yeah I just cannot read like I used to I do use audio sometimes as well um Kindle has a feature that you can or at least you can use your phone's accessibility to read books to you with um the Siri or um, I have my Kindle Fire which I use for uh, the Pattern Keeper but occasionally I will use it because it has a text-to-speech feature so it can read it to you as well which is nice yeah because the actual Kindle Paperwhite doesn't have a speaker so that doesn't work but you could put a Kindle app on basically any device and if it has an accessibility where it will read the screen then you can get it to read to you so yeah if I run out of podcasts that's what I do I listen to a book while I walk yeah I think I said that's why I don't read as much as because I can't really do two things at once and I'm not good at doing just one thing at a time anymore <laughs> You know, I stitch while the TV's on or while listening to an audiobook or, yeah. Okay. I remember when I was a kid and we were camping, my mom would have me read to her. <laughs> 
because she was kind of resting, she's tired, but she wasn't like sleepy tired. So yeah, and I was reading a book. She's like, well, why don't you read it to me? So, oh, I did all these and I forgot to mark them. I think I even did them yesterday. Yeah, yes, I did. There we go. So yeah, I guess my stitch count was actually higher yesterday than I thought. Okay. Yeah, since it's a cooler day, I'm going to check my meal subscription, see if anything was calls for the oven to be used. I'll make it today when it's not so hot. Yeah. Got my meal subscription box yesterday, so. Yeah, although they always call for you to have the oven at 450, which... I often lower it because I followed their directions and almost burned things a few times. And so I'm like, yeah, 450 is really hot. <laughs> so I lower it to 425 and maybe cook it another minute or two. But I find I don't burn things when I do that. So yeah, I only cook maybe biscuits at 450. And yeah, you have to be careful and catch them just right or they burn. So. I said I like to make bread but I don't use a bread maker anymore I have a stand mixer and I bake it in the oven which means of course that it uh the house will heat up which is fine in the winter which is why I make a lot of fresh bread in the winter or we make our own pizza dough it was funny too I had one time I made us mini pizzas and I forgot to poke any holes in the crust so the whole thing puffed up and got really fat and I'm like yeah, I'll just claim I was trying to make deep dish pizza. <laughs> uh, still tasted good, though, I gotta say. along the edge here. This color. Oh, I had this color out, that's why. Okay. I pulled out the envelope and was thinking, hey, where'd my thread card go? Oh, that's because you already have it out in your tray. Yes. <laughs> Colors used a fair bit here, so that is why I brought it out and I forgot that I did. Mm. Oh, goodness, excuse me. Yeah, so we had the um, the tree removal company come out and assess that dying tree. But yeah, it's almost a thousand bucks to take it down. So we're like, yeah, I think we'll leave it for another year because, yeah, spending a bunch on renos this year. That will strain the budget a little bit, so... And as I said, we're going to buy Kiddo a new bed. He's outgrown his, his current bed. It's getting a bit cramped in there for him.
whoops, ah, oh, darn it. Okay, let's see. I bought myself this little telescoping tool pickup thing here. Let's see if I can find the needle. Didn't see exactly where it would go. Nope, okay, I'll find it like later. <laughs> Yeah, I bought it so I wouldn't have to get up to find it, but I discovered that I still seem to have to get down on my hands and knees with the magnet and <laughs> search for the needle that way. Uh, slipped right out of my fingers. And I heard it hit the hardwood. My little uh, magnet tool I bought was like ten dollars, so wasn't a huge waste. <laughs> sure, I'll find other places to use it. worst was it made a little knot like that once and it was on the wrong side and I was doing a pin stitch and I didn't find it until after I cut the thread yeah that was annoying <sighs> did start at zero today, so, but yeah, like I said, it's gonna be close to 400 stitches to get to 45%, so I don't think that's gonna happen. Okay, I'm just gonna check one here. Yeah, that is a long one, so that one I'm going to do and park further, and this one I'm going to tie off. If that one up there was a short one and only enough to do the four stitches there, I would have carried this over, even though it's a little further. But since the other thread can handle the other stitches, yeah, there's no point to me leaving this one still attached. My husband had to leave early, extra early for work today, so that kind of woke me up and I couldn't go back to sleep, so... Yeah, especially because he forgot to disarm the house before he was leaving, so you have like 30 seconds once you open the door, but yeah. That meant it was beeping for longer while he ran back to the panel to disarm it. So, yeah. At that point, I was totally awake. Okay, so. Right. Got some other of this color here. I'm just gonna give it a take a look. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is that one's gonna carry down this way. So I'm just gonna get a short little piece here for those two stitches, because I'm pretty sure I have some leftover bits. Oh yes, I do, perfect. Yeah, so I had someone asking, what do I, you know, I always use loop starts, what do I do with my bits of leftover thread? And yeah, I always fold them in half and keep using them. When they're too short to fold in half, then I discard them. Well, if they're still long enough to do a few stitches, then I'll do a waist thread method. Yeah. 
Loop starts are by far my favorite. So yeah, put that just for those two little stitches there. So yeah, like I said, I uh, we had to put off our renovations a little bit longer. Some unexpected stuff came up. So again, I will try to keep up with my upload schedule for you all over the next month, but we will see. Yeah. I'm not, I'm looking forward to having it done, but I'm not looking forward to doing it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I was, I said to my friend the other day, it's the, when you're living in the house while you're doing the flooring, it's, yeah. It sucks because you gotta move everything. So much easier to do when you don't have any furniture in the house. Yeah, so he said, like, our kiddo is going to be in the living room for a while. <laughs> and we're going to be in the guest room. While we, because the living room is hardwood and we're not, we're not touching that right now. So. We're just dealing with carpet this time. So. The hallway and the bedrooms will be carpeted. Because, yeah, like I said, that carpet was old when we moved in. Oh, 18 years ago. Yeah. It's one of those things we've been meaning to do ever since, but, you know. <laughs> Ooh, that is life, right? The time gets away from you. Well, it was always there was something more critical that needed to be done, like we had to redo our roof, because obviously you do not want leaks. <laughs> yeah. We had to replace the furnace, because obviously you need heat, and 
Yeah, so it's like something like this, which is cosmetic, always gets pushed to the, the lowest priority. Yeah. The things that cannot be put off, obviously, they get done first. So. indent here now we're filling it in then we'll make another <laughs> so yeah kind of finished this diamond here now we're going to start the next bit yeah and then i will sort of do the lattice work around that one and then probably start the next one there but that won't be today we'll see i will decide when i get to it which is what I normally do. So there's quite a few of these diamonds, and then there will be some flowers on the, yeah, in that right hand corner coming up. But like I said, that'll be a while till I get there. No, you're not gonna, huh? Yeah. Oh, rats. No. It's a small knot, but... No, you're just not gonna work, huh? Well, that's annoying. Yeah, it's a small one, but enough that it does not want to be stitched with. Sometimes when it's a tiny knot, I can kind of just keep stitching with it, but this one is not going to cooperate, is it? Well, that's irritating. I hate when that happens. It doesn't want to pop through the fabric. I don't want to force it because it'll distort things. So, yeah, unfortunately. And we'll have to rip back until there is enough to secure it because it would not work with me. Okay, so let's. Well, one reason I like to not color in on my pattern until stitches are actually completed is sometimes this happens. <laughs> okay, so get a whole new strand and try that again. Yeah, I did that once where a knot was kind of um, borderline and I did force it through the fabric and then later discovered that it looked off because the holes got enlarged and uh yeah so i was like i really should have taken the time to <laughs> cut it out and not force it like that yeah this was a really old project i did and i'm sure probably nobody else could see it but for me ever after that it was like all i could see <laughs> so yeah 
It annoyed me forever. Yeah, I don't think I have that, that project anymore. I'm not even sure if I remember what happened to it. Yeah, my very first cross-stitch piece was a little Home Sweet Home sampler. One of my friends gave it to me as a birthday gift for, like, my 11th or 12th birthday, and then, yeah. I was hooked. <laughs> I didn't do full coverage back then. I did little kits and things from magazines. Yeah, and then I quit for a while, and I was knitting for... Oh, sheesh. Like 15 years, I did lots and lots of knitting. And then, yeah, one day I thought, I want a picture of a lighthouse. And then I thought, you know what? I could cross-stitch one. And, yeah, that was how that started. That was my first full coverage piece. Okay. That. Okay, for a second I thought I pierced the fabric in the wrong spot. I hadn't. We are good. Oops. Yeah, like I said, a lot more orange here than I would have expected from looking at the mock-up. Well, I did say I was probably going to use separate threads, but actually, now that I'm stitching it, I discover it looks like I don't really need it. I found a way to, to do it with one strand. Like I often say, I can't plan too far ahead because I can't hold that many strands in my head at once. often changes when I get there. Yeah, I, 
don't mind having more than one thread of the same color, but if I don't need it, then I prefer not to add another one. I don't really have a specific order for doing these little diamond bits. I just, yeah, just kind of keep adding where, wherever I feel like traveling. <laughs> okay. That one was threaded, but the needle didn't want to stay. So yeah, car going down my street's probably a lot louder than usual today because I got my windows open, so. Mm. Yeah, I try to keep background noise to a minimum, but it's not like I'm working in a studio, so <laughs> there's only so much I can do. Oh, grabbing the wrong orange yet. Well, I knew when I picked it up, wait a minute, that was too bright. Don't want to thread.
that's about right. There was too much resistance on the needle, which meant it might pierce the fabric instead of it. The needle going through the correct hole. Okay, I'm gonna go the other way. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes finding it from the under side can be tricky. Let's not have that again. Darn. I'm not having luck today. Oh, look at that. I don't know. Maybe it's this color of thread. Is it the same color last time or not? I can't remember. The oranges here are so similar, but oh my gosh. Really? Well, stop shredding. That's better. Yeah, I have noticed certain colors are more prone to knotting up than others. 
suspect there may be differences in the dyeing processes for different colors, so that could be it. Oops, I was not planning to start a new thread so quickly, but the thread had other plans. It tied itself in knots. That's annoying. Well, there's enough left here for the next time I have just a stitch or two of that color, so. It's not entirely wasted, but yeah, that's annoying. Nothing like getting into a rhythm and then having it suddenly not up on you and interrupting your flow of stitching. <laughs>
So now that's that diamond pretty much done. Then, yeah, what I do is I start doing the lattice work around it and then do another diamond. So that's what I've been doing. Almost like when I was adding each feather at a time. Now I'm adding sort of each little, uh, little diamond shape at a time. This piece is not very long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry it down this way and back up. there. Ah, yes, I remember I did check this piece and it was long enough to carry sort of all the way around that curve, but I need to do some other colors first. And this one, I believe I decided I was going to carry downwards. Yes. Okay. I did a little bit more and then I think I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Hard to believe it's going to be time to do the monthly update for this.
this one just flown on by. So it'll be a little bit out of order here because of the way these threads cross each other. It's okay. Like I said, I won't close in on all three sides, so that's fine. Right, so they're still connected to something that's already been stitched. Yeah, I don't sort of do floating stitches. <laughs> Very occasionally I will, but most of the time I try to avoid it because I miscount a lot more easily when I do that. That one. Yeah, so there's another purple thread up top that I'm going to use for those. This one I'm going to carry downwards. Yeah, I did not entirely finish the diamond that was above this one, but close enough. And we'll go back up there and fill that in later. This is a color that I will be using extra or separate threads for because it branches off. So one will go this way and then I'll add another to go that way. more colors and then I'm going to call it a day. Yeah, we got pretty close to uh, got pretty close to 45% but yeah, I would still have to do close to 80 more stitches to get it to there so I will not be doing that today.
I might make it there off camera. carry this thread until it needs parking or it runs out and then that will be it for today. go oh look at that 222 i like stopping on numbers like that because i'm just weird <laughs> so thank you so much for joining me today and i hope to see you here next time thanks everyone